Check one, two. What's up guys, Stan here in Joshua Tree National Park, getting ready to shoot the Milky Way. And I'm gonna be shooting that with the Sony A7R Mark II, the Tokina Firin 20 millimeter, and this guy, the Hoya Intensifier. It's definitely my secret weapon. Not gonna lie, no BS. If you uh, are, are an astrophotographer or considering shooting the uh, Milky Way or Nightscape uh, photography in general, you should probably consider picking one of these up for a few reasons. Uh, and and uh, one of the main reasons is that this filter actually cuts through light pollution big time. It uh, suppresses the uh, sodium vapor wavelengths that uh, our city lights emit, which is the biggest um, reason we have light pollution. And the second thing is it definitely dramatically helps you out in post uh, processing. So I will be doing some before and after uh, shots with it on and with it off and a final edit of what that uh, shot looks like. That's about it. Um, you will definitely see the difference and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, if you have any questions uh, about the filter, you can always hit me up through my website and I'll do the best to help you guys out. All right guys, see you in a little bit. Later. Hey, what's up guys? Stan back here at home. After an awesome night shooting the Milky Way at Joshua Tree National Park, we got here four images, before and after images using the intensifier. But before we jump into these samples, I wanted to go over a few extra things I didn't mention earlier about this uh, Hoya intensifier. So traditionally, these intensifiers are used on fall foliage because they really increase the saturation the color saturations in the reds. I'm actually using them on sunsets as well. And the intensifier also yields a more neutral color balance in astrophotography at time of capture, which can save a lot of time in post-processing, which I did mention earlier. And uh, these filters are available in 49 millimeter to 82 millimeter, if you guys are wondering. So let's jump into these images. So let's go back here. So we got this one, we got a few images here. This is with the intensifier. And this is without the intensifier. It's pretty easy to see the difference with and without. With and without. And of course you can see all this light pollution right here. This is all coming from Palm Springs. So here's another sample. This is without the intensifier. I'm going to do a quick little edit in Lightroom on this image here. And to the right of me, as you can see there, I haven't done anything. It's all, all at zero. I'm just going to do a quick little edit in Lightroom. Here we go. I can stop crying All right, guys, there you go. That's a little edit just in Lightroom to my liking right now. I'll be right before I drop it into Photoshop for the final touches. So I'm going to copy this, this edit and apply it to the other ones. This is the photo without the intensifier on. Paste that. Let's go through these guys really quick. Paste that one on. Okay, as you can see, the sky looks a little bit more natural, actually a lot more natural. You can actually almost see a little bit of the glow, the air glow. So on this image, there'll be a lot more work that I would normally do to take away all that orange in the background there. To me, this was, you know, an okay edit, you know, a few years back until I started using the intensifier and knowing the difference and how awesome it is. This filter is just pure magic. Having this filter is a huge tool for any astrophotographer out there. If you uh, need any help, have any more questions, anything I didn't cover, uh, feel free to hit me up on my website at stamonies.com and I will be happy to help you out. So there you go guys. Hopefully this video was uh, informative enough for you to uh, maybe consider picking up one of these intensifiers. Alright guys, till next time. Aloha.